I have a four kilogram mass at rest. I want to move this mass to the right, 10 meter to the right. To do so, I will apply 10, maybe 50 Newton, let's say 50 Newton force. As soon as the mass is start moving, there would be another force acting in the opposite direction. That would be the force of friction, kinetic friction. And let's say the kinetic friction would be 30 Newton. Okay? So, I want you to find the work done by every single component. The gravity, work done by normal force, work done by applied force and work done by kinetic friction. So, let us take a look. Work done by applied force. Work is F d cosine theta. So, F is of course the 50 Newton and D is of course the 10 meter. Now cosine, you can write cosine but theta you are not sure so we have to draw a diagram. So the box is moving, box is moving to displacement vector and this is the force vector. Vector and displacement vector are the same direction than the cosine theta. This is zero degree. Cosine zero degree is one. So you write W is equal to 500 joule. Now we want to find work done by friction, of course. Work done by friction. This is work done by applied force, you can write. Instead of force, applied force. Fd cosine theta, of course. So work done by friction would be F is 30 Newton and D is of course 10 and cosine theta we are not sure so let's find it out. So this is the object, this is the displacement vector, this is the force vector. When force vector and displacement vector opposite to each other then the theta is 180 degree. So cosine 180 degree is negative 1. So W friction, work done by friction is negative 300 joule. Now we're going to do work done by gravity. Work done by gravity G, uh, F, uh, FD cosine theta. So FG, F is of course, uh, I mean MG. And the D is of course 50, and the D is of course the 10, and cosine, let's find the theta. So this is uh, the force factor, this is the Fg, and this is the displacement vector. So when force vector and displacement vector are perpendicular to each other, then the theta is 90 degree. So cosine 90 degrees is zero. So work done by gravity is zero. Now work done by normal force for that matter is also zero because both components will be perpendicular. So work done by normal force will be zero. So total net work is um, work done by applied force minus work done by friction. So net work done on this box or on this mass would be how much? Work done by applied force is 500 joule minus 300 joule. So work done, net work is 200 joule. Now, as I said, our goal is to find the velocity. So how can we find the velocity? So uh, work is also half mv squared. So half mv squared is equal to 200 right so mv squared is equal to 400 so v squared m is of course mass mass is 4 so divide both sides by 4 so 100 so v is 10 meter per second so you know that v is 10 meter per second now instead of horizontal now the motion we're going to consider the vertical motion let's say 2 kilogram object 
Do you want a lift? Two meter above the ground. Okay, so what would be the work done on this box or mass for that matter? And of course, uh, I also wanted to find out the network, network done on this object. So let's see, work done by u is equal to f d cosine theta. Now let's find the weight of this box. Weight is of this box is f g is equal to m g. M is 2, G is 9.8. All right, so it's okay. So this is the weight is 19.6. So WU is equal to MGD cosine theta. Okay, so MG is 19.6 times 2 is the height and cosine theta. Now let's find out what would be the cosine theta. So this is the box. When displacement vector or force vector are the same direction, then of course the cosine theta is gonna be zero degree. So this is one. Done by gravity is gonna be F D cosine theta. So what done by gravity is M G cosine theta. What done by gravity mg would be 19.6 mg d cosine theta d would be 2 cosine theta now we're gonna find the theta so this is the force vector and this is the displacement vector all right so when force vector and displacement vector are at the opposite direction then of course this one gonna be 180 degree and that is negative one for that matter. So work done by gravity has to be negative 39.2 uh, joule. So net work done on this mass would be work done by you plus work done by gravity. Net work would be work done by you is 39.2 joule. And work done by gravity is negative 39.2. So work done uh, network would be zero joule for that matter. Now, the next problem we're gonna connect this idea with the power. But first, take a look at the video. We're gonna make a connection between work and power. Work is F D cosine theta, and power is the rate at which work is done. That means work over time. So, can you find the work right now? when I am holding this weight, a mass suspended to the rope. Well, you cannot find the work is because there is a zero displacement. So work done is zero. So if I lift this mass, one kilogram mass upward for the height of 48 centimeter then you would be able to find the work and you would be able to find the power so now let's use the timer I'm going to use the timer over here on the computer and let's do it it's four second so it took four second for me to complete this work so record it good now for the second trial I'm going to change the mass from one kilogram to only 0.5 kilogram so half a kilogram 500 gram so I'm going to do the same experiment the height is going to be the same and let's see how long it's going to take so let's use the stopwatch So it took me 3.5 seconds to complete this work. The, there is a one kilogram object, one kilogram mass. I am holding a one kilogram mass and then I'm lifting one kilogram mass. It took me four seconds. 
and uh, the height is the time is four seconds and the height is 48 centimeters yeah 48 centimeters which is 0.48 meters the another scenario of course is uh, the mass is of course 0.5 kilogram it took me the time it took me 3.5 seconds and the height of course is remain the same okay, so let's first find the work w is equal to f d cosine theta so f would be m g h cosine theta so let's find the uh, the the m g which is the weight m is 1 and g is a 9.8 so this is 9.8 newton so 9.8 times the height would be 0.48 meter and then cosine theta now let's see the theta okay so now this is our object the force is of course this direction and the displacement is also this direction so the theta is zero so 4.7 joule all right let's see this one w is equal to f d cosine theta so w is equal to f would be uh 9.8 uh, not 9.8 m g h cosine theta be careful because this m is 0.5 and this g is of course 9.8 and h is of course 0.48 and cosine is 0 degree for the same reason so this would be 2.352 joule okay now we want to find the power so the power is w over t and the power is w over t so w is 4.7 and the time is uh, 4 so 175 watt and then the power is w is 2.35 divided by 3.5 is 0.67 watts all right now we're going to consider the electric power power is equal to voltage times the current we're going to derive two equations using ohm's law one for series and one for parallel so ohm's law tells us vir so from here we're going to really derive two equations one for series and one for parallel the series one of course we're going to replace v by ir so it's going to be this v going to be ir so that's going to be i squared r and for the parallel one that i going to be replaced by v over r so this is going to be v squared over r all right so now we're going to um start with hypothesis hypothesis is power the C rated is equal to brightness brightness of the of course bulb. So let's first consider this series circuit. Let's say the series circuit has 18 volt, 3 ohms, and 6 ohms. Alright, who's uh, bulb would be brighter this we can say bulb number one and this is bulb number two okay we can directly use the formula okay so let's use the formula uh, so we can say that the power of six ohms or power of six ohms and power of three ohms is equal to of course we have the formula i square r over i square r 
So I square I square cancel. R would be how much? R would be 6 ohm and 3 ohm. Ohm ohm cancel, 3 goes to 6 twice. Okay. Now this would be twice as brighter. This one would be twice as brighter. Why is that? Because the voltage drop would be twice as high. So this would be twice as brighter. Because the voltage drops right here would be twice as high. How do we know? Okay, let's find the total resistance. Total resistance is of course 9. 18 divided by 9 is 2 amps. So 2 amps current is here. 2 amps current is here. Okay. Now the voltage drops would be 12. And voltage drop would be 6. Since the voltage drops is double over here, then this would be twice as brighter. Now, let's take a look the other side of the coin. And that would be, of course, the parallel circuit. Now, I have the same uh, 18 volt. And this is, of course, 3 ohms. And this is, of course, 6 ohms. The same problem, now we are doing it in parallel. Now, you will see that now this would be twice as brighter. Okay, let's get to see. Now, let's find equivalence resistance. Equivalence resistance would be two ohms. How? Because one over R is equal to one over three plus one over six. So it's gonna be one over R is equal to six, two plus one, so 1 over r is equal to 3 over 6. So 3r is equal to 6. So r is equal to 2. So equivalence resistance, equivalence resistance is 2 ohms. What does that mean? That means the current, total current would be 9 amps. So here the total current would be 9 amps. So how much current over here? Okay, it's very easy to find, let's pass find the voltage, 18 volt, 18 volt. So the current over here is gonna be VIR, all right? So V is 18, 18 divided by three is six amps. And 18 divided by six is three amps. All right, so this bar is, will be twice as bright. Is because there is more current in this bulb. If you have any questions, write in the comment box below and I will make the different video to address your questions.